Thanks, John. Thanks, everybody. We are actually joining right now Live Link with our Pittsburgh East campus. So everyone here at City, can you make some noise for our Pittsburgh East location this morning? What's up, Pittsburgh East? We love you. So glad to be with you. Hope you're all having a fantastic morning. I'm sure that you are. Thanks, band. We love you guys. You're amazing. So last week, we um, had a, a really awesome Sunday. And, you know, me and Sam Collier had a very difficult conversation as a part of our worship experiences last Sunday, and I know that many of you were there for that. And, and I just wanted to take a second, and you know, I'm speaking to everyone here at Smallman Street. I'm also speaking to everyone at Pittsburgh East right now. I just wanna take a second and say thank you to all of you who make up Amplified Church for being willing to have that difficult conversation. And I know that you know, we're talking about issues that are challenging, issues that are controversial, issues that you know, people have really strong feelings and emotions about, and I'm just really proud of all of you for being willing to have that conversation. I know that, I know that you know, we probably left last Sunday, for those of you, you guys who are here, or those of you guys who listen online, I know that, that listening to, to what happened last Sunday, probably not everyone like fully agrees with everything that was said, and that's okay. The, the point actually wasn't, let's all agree on everything. The point was, even though we see things differently, and even though we not, may not fully agree, we can still be brothers and sisters together. And we can still love each other. And we can still be in this together. And the divisions and the challenges that exist in our city, the divisions that exist in our society, don't have to exist in the church. In fact, I believe that if we would, we would choose to love people, even though we may not agree, that we literally can be a force for good in our city where we can tear down the divisions that exist in our city. And we can set a better way and a better example because we're in this together and we may not always agree, but we're gonna love anyways. And, and so, you know, we, we got lots of feedback and lots of responses from last Sunday and the overwhelming majority of it was really, really positive. And so thank you to everyone who, who sent that. And of course, there were some people who were like, I didn't agree with that. And, and again, that's okay. The, the point wasn't let's all agree. The point was let's come together and let's be brothers and sisters and let's love anyways. But I got one note that I just wanted to share with the whole church. And this is um, a note that I got this week and I wanna read it to you. Jason, I wanted to tell you that I appreciated the discussion that you and Sam had on Sunday about the Antoine Rose case. I was surprised and pleased that you felt the need to address this issue. It's nice to know that my church family is brave enough to address issues that may be controversial. Jesus never shied away from controversy. I've been coming to Amplify since 2011, and I have never really felt a part of the Amplify family until this past Sunday. Don't get me wrong, I love our church, but I've never felt that it was inclusive because I don't feel like our church reflects the diversity that exists in our city. I love to see more diversity across the church, but these are teachable moments when we allow ourselves to walk in someone else's shoes and see things from someone else's vantage point. God bless and thank you. And I thought that was a powerful note because basically they're saying, because of that conversation, I feel like this is my family now. And that's really the goal, right? Let's be a family, let's love each other, let's not let the same divides that exist in our society exist in our church, and let's shine a better light forward for our city, a light of love, a light of togetherness, a light of I'm gonna get on your level, look you in the eye, and we're all gonna come together, amen? Amen, all right, well thank you so much, and Pittsburgh East, you guys are about to have an awesome Sunday. I know Lee has an incredible word that is gonna really help you and challenge you and bless you and take you forward. So once again, can we all give it up for our Pittsburgh East family? We love you guys. Have an awesome Sunday. Have an awesome and let's Sunday. thank God for our city campus. A couple of our brand new worship leaders who are right on this side uh, are visiting us. From, where are you guys? Are you right here? Hey, they're for, that's, they came from our city campus today to bless us. You guys are, where do we come up with all these amazing worship leaders? You know, I had, I had lunch on Friday with a pastor in the city who said, like us, last week they spent a fair amount of time in their message talking about the trial regarding the death of Antoine Rose, and um, uh, we were talking about it, and he said, you know what, if the people of our church are talking about a topic before church, and they're talking about a topic after church, how relevant are we as a church if we can't talk about it in church? And I thought, 
Well, that's true. I know that church is not just about current events. It's about Jesus. But I did agree with what he was saying. Um, but that does raise challenges. Uh, it's easier when, uh, as one pastor, believe it or not, told me, he said, we want to have our church in such a way that Democrats will feel unwelcome to come. <laughs> and you know what? I thought, I don't, want it. I don't want a church where everybody votes the same way, thinks the same way, believes the same way, and so then you can all pat each other on the back. And you say, that, that's, that to me is not the body of Christ. <laughs> so... Um, but it does raise challenges. Now, look, look at these words of the Apostle Paul. Above all these things, put on love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony, he wrote to the Colossians. Now, I think that Paul might agree with me that it's much easier to pursue harmony with people who think clearly. And my definition of thinking clearly is that you think like I think. <laughs> Can you say amen? <laughs> um, but... People don't think the same way. Actually, I don't think the same way I used to think a few years back. And I remember when we were in Cambodia and we were visiting the orphanage that we sponsor, I thought, I want to understand what it's like to live in Cambodia. And so I started to ask questions and lots of questions of people who were living there. And I was uh, listening and saying, I need to listen. I need to understand. I need to empathize. I did a lot of reading about Cambodia and their present and their past. And I watched and rewatched this movie, Killing Fields, about the dark days of Cambodia. And I learned, I learned one thing that I would never fully understand what it was like to live in Cambodia. But I also felt this way, that God is pleased with me trying. That somehow by trying to learn, by trying to understand, by trying to empathize, it, allowed us, it allows us to build bridges. And you know what? I understand. I'm, there's going to be certain racial issues. I will never get. I will never understand. But I think it is fully pleasing to God that I'm trying, that I'm learning, that I'm learning to empathize. And that's what allows us to build bridges. And hopefully bridges are being built the other way. And there are certain things about the next generation. There are definitely things about the next generation that I will never fully understand. I won't, but I'm trying. And the more we try, I believe it's pleasing to God that we try to learn, to understand, to empathize. And it builds bridges, and hopefully bridges are coming back the other way, being built. And then all of a sudden we build a church that's not everybody votes the same way, believes the same thing. No, all of a sudden we build a church that can be a catalyst for healing in this broken world. Because we found that kind of healing in in our own church. So there's a person next to you serving on a volunteer team who about some issues thinks completely different than you. Or there's a person next to you in your church who's in your small group and they're sitting right across in, in the easy chair and they think completely different than you about certain issues. Is that okay? Yeah. Because there's an undeniable power that pulls us together. And it's the power of our conviction about the core vision of who we are to lead as many people as possible into a growing relationship with Jesus Christ. Can you say amen to that? <laughs> Ephesians 1, verse 11. It's in Christ that we find out who we are and what we are living for. Long before we first heard of Christ and got our hopes up, he had his eye on us. He had designs on us for glorious living. Part of the overall purpose he is working out in everything and everyone. And this series is called In His Image. And the idea is God created us to live a certain way, to be a certain way. And then sin and evil entered into this world and brought great brokenness in person, our personal lives and in the world around us. And then God sent his son Jesus Christ to the cross. And through the cross, Everything changes, that in Christ we've seen, we can find completeness. In Christ, we can find freedom. And today I wanna to focus on this truth, that in Christ, I find healing from my brokenness. In Christ, I can find healing 
from my brokenness. So we're going to start in Psalm 103, verse 1. Bless the Lord, O my soul, all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget none of his benefits, who pardons all your iniquities, who heals all your diseases. So right, right away we read the psalmist saying, don't ever forget, God is the God who pardons our sins. Doesn't matter how many sins you have, how dark you feel your sins are, God is the one who pardons, who forgives all of our sins. Um, when I was growing up, the LPs often playing in our living room were LPs by people like Glenn Miller and Frank Sinatra. Those were my dad's favorites. He had his favorite songs that I would hear over and over. And later in life, he, he, he found a new faith in Christ. He became very active in church. And then he started to talk about some new favorite songs. And the one that he told me, the one I really like, is this one that says, he paid a debt he did not owe. I owed a debt I could not pay. And it ends by saying, um, my Jesus paid a debt that I could never pay. And you know what? That is, the, the cross changed everything. And at the cross, Jesus paid a debt for us what the psalmist is talking about and what Jesus came to fulfill is this. Don't ever forget that God forgives your sins. Don't ever forget that. But he also says this. Don't ever forget that God heals us. He's not just a forgiver. He's also our healer. He's not just the one who pardons our sins. He's the one who heals us. Um, look what we read in another psalm, Psalm 147, verse 3. He heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. And I know when we think of God's healing power, we often think about physical healing, but it's not just about physical healing. Uh, it's about our brokenness. And we're broken in so many areas of life. And so think of it this way, bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget none of his benefits, who forgives all of your sins, and who heals all of your brokenness. He is the God who heals your brokenness. And so I want you to think today about brokenness that you may need healing from in your life. Maybe it is physical healing for you or a loved one. Maybe it's a mental health issue that for you or a loved one has brought brokenness to your life or to your family. Maybe it's a broken heart, literally, that you, you feel because you've lost someone who is so close to you. A broken relationship. Uh, a broken relationship with a spouse, a parent, a child, a family member, a friend. Um, maybe your financial situation can honestly, honestly be described as broken. And as a result, you are broke. Um, and you say, wow, I need God to heal my finances in some way. Perhaps you're experiencing brokenness of your life over a legal issue or a custody issue or, or something that is kind of tearing your heart and your mind apart. Maybe you're experiencing brokenness in your life because of an addiction that's keeping you or someone you love from ever coming close to the person God has called you to be or that person to be. And maybe it's leading to a path of self-destruction. We live in a broken world. And the brokenness affects all of us in some way or another. There's good news. No matter what area of your life feels broken, we can say those words. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, who heals all of our brokenness. Who heals all of our brokenness. And take hope in, in, in that. And if you, if you wonder if God's plan for you is health and wholeness, just think about First of all, think about the creation. When God created Adam and Eve, they were living in the garden. What were they living in? They were living in health and wholeness. Absolutely. Why? Because that's, that's the way God created things to be. That was, God's will and God's way were completely played out and be, before sin and evil entered into this world. Think about heaven. Think about heaven. When we get to heaven, you know what? There's not going to be a children's hospital in heaven. I thank God for Pittsburgh's Children's Hospital, and we have a great healthcare community here. The Children's Hospital, helping kids like London Howard and so many others become healthy. I thank God for that. 
But there will be no children's hospital in heaven. Why? Because God's perfect will and plan will be carried out in heaven and is being carried out in heaven, and that is health and wholeness. And I want to take a look at the life of Jesus because when Jesus came into the world, he came in as one with his heavenly Father. Everything Jesus said, everything Jesus did was perfectly in line with the will and the plan of God. And guess what he brought into this world? Health and wholeness. Let's read about it. Let's start with Matthew. Matthew 4, verse 23. Jesus traveled throughout the region of Galilee, teaching in the synagogues and announcing the good news about the kingdom. And he healed every kind of disease and illness. Wow, healing people was something that Jesus did a lot as he walked on this earth, not just setting people free from physical maladies, but setting people from things that were um, messing up their minds as well. Uh, Matthew recorded the story of the woman who had tried everything to get better. And finally, by faith, she came and touched the hem of Jesus' garment, and she was completely healed. And you know what? Today, by faith, you can find healing for your brokenness. Just put your faith in the one who is the forgiver, the one who is the healer. His name is Jesus. So we start in Matthew, and we see, bless the Lord, O my soul, who heals all of your brokenness. Let's go to Mark. Mark 1, verse 40. A man with leprosy came and knelt in front of Jesus, begging to be healed. If you are willing, you can heal me and make me clean, he said. Move with compassion. Jesus reached out and touched him. I am willing. Be healed. Instantly, the leprosy disappeared, and the man was healed. You know, this man had heard that Jesus was healing sick people right and left wherever he went. There was no question in his mind that Jesus was able. But he did have a question if Jesus was willing. And he said, if you're willing, I could be whole. And Jesus cleared it up right away. Oh, I am both able and willing. And God sent his son, Jesus Christ, who is saying to us, I am both able and willing to heal you. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, who heals all of our brokenness. We heard from Matthew and Mark. Look at these words from Luke, verse 38. At sunset, or this is verse 40. At sunset, the people brought to Jesus all who had various kinds of sickness, and laying his hands on each one, he healed them. Wow. See, Jesus didn't go down the row of people who had come for healing and say, you deserve to be healed. I'm going to pray for you. I think you deserve to be healed. I'm going to pray for you. Uh, not, not you. <laughs> not, not, definitely not you. You deserve to be healed. It wasn't about deserving. It says he healed them all. And you see, it's not about whether you or I deserve to find healing for our brokenness. It's about the goodness of God, not our deserving. And so, so when, when, um, when Luke wrote about the prodigal son who was healed of his brokenness, did he deserve it? Absolutely not. So don't sit back and say, have I earned the, the work of God in my life? Of course you haven't. In fact, if you think you have, you're the one in trouble because you can't. It's about Jesus. It's not about you. It's about his love and his power. And so if we hear about, here's the fact, bless the Lord, all my soul, who heals all of our brokenness. And we see it in Matthew. We see it in Mark. We see it in Luke. Guess where we're going to look next? John, <laughs> Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. We need some more Bible study. <laughs> Third John 1. Beloved, I pray that in all respects you may prosper and be in good health, just as your soul prospers. Now, John was such a close disciple to Jesus. Do you think that he would pray something contrary to the will and the plan of God? There is no way. He's, he is praying directly in line with the will and the plan of God. He had walked closely with Jesus. He saw the physical healings. He saw Jesus healing broken people like the woman at the well, a woman who had no purpose and no hope, and Jesus gave her purpose, and Jesus gave her hope. 
And he knew firsthand from walking with Jesus that God is a healer of our brokenness. And so never hesitate to pray that way. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Now, how, how many of you here work somewhere in the healthcare industry? There's a lot of people, a lot of hands. Pittsburgh's a great healthcare city. Well, you know what? You're in a noble profession because you're bringing health and wholeness to people. And that's right in line with what God's plan is. There's no question. Same is true of mental health professionals. You're in sync with God's plan to bring health and wholeness to people. If you're a, a, an expert in diet and fitness and nutrition, then you're, you're bringing that to bring health and wholeness to people. It's a noble profession. And thank God that he uses people in the medical profession, the mental health community, people in diet and, and, and fitness and, and nutrition to to partner with him to bring health and wholeness to people. And that's so often how it happens. Um, I stood, actually, our, our platform when I was a 25-year-old pastor was over in where, the, where Jehai is right now. But when I was 25, I was 140 pounds. It's not really a lot. Um, and then as time went on, I gained, no, I didn't gain much weight, I gained only an average of two pounds a year. That's not much. That's like nothing. But five years ago, the doctor's showing me this height weight chart because my blood work wasn't coming in the way it should. And he said, and I looked and I said, should I take the, you want me to take that seriously? He said, yeah, we should talk about this. And I had one of two options. I could pray to grow four to five inches And I didn't have enough faith for that, I, I have to say. Or I could lose 20 pounds. And so I talked with Dr. Will Cole, who is really into nutrition, and he gave me some great advice. I, I talked to Kristen Rosenberg, gave me some great advice about um, physical fitness and things. And uh, I, I tried to take all of these things and incorporate them into my life. And I've done you know, a, a pretty steady job of being able to do that over the years. But you know what? I'm 20 pounds lighter now than I was five years ago, and I'm healthier than I was five years ago. So what does that say? It says that if God's will is for healing and wholeness, we want to work, we, we want to be in sync with God's plan as much as we can be. It's, it's kind of like if you're unemployed and you're looking for a job, you can get on your knees and say, God, miraculously, bring me a job. Let my new employer just knock on my, just, just ring the doorbell. They don't know me, but just miraculously have them ring the doorbell and, and hand me my first check. You know what? If you want a new job, you, you, you pick up a book like What Colors Your Parachute, a Bible for people finding a new job or a new career path, and then you learn about informational interviewing, you get your resume together, you get out there on LinkedIn or wherever else you need to find out what's out there, and while you're praying, you're living in a way that is in sync with your prayers. And all of a sudden you find, oh, wow, thank you, Lord, for blessing me with that job. And a part of that blessing was that you were moving in the right direction. Never wonder if God wants you to be healed of your brokenness. Work together with him in that. But don't ever hesitate, because there's the supernatural aspect of, of that brokenness being healed, that there's nothing that you can, it really has to be the work of God. Don't ever be shy about praying for God's health and for his wholeness. Now, here's a question. By the, by the way, that word salvation comes from the Greek word S-O-Z-O, -O, which means to be made whole to be made complete. Jesus went to the cross so that we could be saved, that's true, but that just doesn't mean that we would go to heaven. It's about being restored, being restored, and we'll never be fully restored till we're in heaven, but there's a restoration that can take place in our lives while we're on this earth, where we find a new wholeness and health through Christ as we trust, as we pray as we pray with confidence, the same prayer that we just read from John. And you may have a question that I've wrestled with many times over the years. You say, well, how, 
How about if I prayed for healing in the past and it didn't come? How can I pray with confidence in the future when that's a part of my memory, of my history? And um, first of all, I think that sometimes the ultimate healing we pray for is only found in heaven. Ultimately, that's where we all want to be. I mean, even Lazarus, who was raised from the dead by Jesus in the city of Bethany, if you go over to Bethany right now, he's not around. You know, I thought he raised him from the dead. What's up? Well, yeah, he did, and then he died. At, at some point, he, he either got sick, he died of old age, he got hit by a chariot. We don't know what happened to Lazarus, but Lazarus is not around. Ultimately, we all... Our hope is to all be in heaven. And so, yes, I thank God when we see the miraculous healing power in, in this world. But ultimately, we have to keep in mind an eternal perspective. But there's something uh, that I also have come to believe. Don't let disappointments from the past become a predictor of what will happen in the future. Don't let disappointments from the past become a predictor of what will happen in the future. Um, in, as a young pastor, I was called to Children's Hospital, um, and there was a five-year-old boy in, in our church who had flu symptoms, and all of a sudden, he took a turn for the worst, and I was in the, I was literally in the, the operating room when they were working on him, and he died. Oh, we had prayed every prayer. We had done everything we know to do. And the doctor said, Pastor, I'm glad you're here so you can go tell the parents. What do you say? The parents ended up sleeping at our house that night <laughs> as we just cried. And, and we said, you know what? Jason, which was the name of his, their son, Jason's in heaven. Jason's with God, and God is with you. And that's all I can say. I don't understand. Of course, there are other people who were glad to give them all kinds of advice, most of which was either trivial or cruel. But in that case, I would just have to say, I, I, don't, I, don't, I have no idea how this could happen. And it was really, I think it was less than a month later that my daughter had some of the same flu symptoms. And I went to pray for her, and immediately my thought was, how can I pray with confidence for my little girl when I just experienced this? And there was something in me that just said, I cannot let this past disappointment that I don't understand keep me from trusting God for a better future for my daughter. And so, you know what? Don't, we, we've all had disappointments in the past. We all have things that we won't understand till we get to heaven, and probably when we get there, we won't care anymore. But you know what? Don't let that stop you from trusting God for your future. I mean, this is totally trivial compared to the idea of health and wholeness. But tomorrow, Linda and I are going to be at the Pittsburgh Pirates home opener. Now, do I believe that the Pirates will win their home opener? I've been to many Pirates home openers. <laughs> and sometimes they've won, and sometimes... In, in fact, I, I looked at this in the entire history of the Pirates. They have won 79 home openers, and they've lost 58 home openers. So, should I look at those 58 losses and say, Oh, well, you know, it's, you know, why even bother going to the game? They're probably going to lose. No, especially with my, my man, Chris Archer, <laughs> pitching tomorrow. I'm going to go in fully expecting that they're going to win as we sit there in the balmy 45-degree weather. <laughs> you know what? If you let past disappointments decide for you that your future is bleak just takes all the joy out of life. And that's, it's just not where, it's not where I want to be. It's not where you want to be. And I don't believe it's where we want to be 
when it comes to our Heavenly Father, for sure. Especially the one who we can say, bless the Lord, O my soul, who heals all of our brokenness. So what area do you need healing from today? Physical healing or mental health issue? Broken heart or a broken relationship? Something in your finances? Something in your life through addiction? Or something else that you would say, my life... There are things in my life that are not the way they're supposed to be. I need the healing power of God. Then as, as we receive communion today, just remember these words, that in Christ, I find healing from my brokenness. And one passage I want to leave you with, we've heard from Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, but perhaps the most prominent Christ follower in the first century was a guy named Peter. Peter walked with Jesus, he saw it all, and look what he wrote in his letter. 1 Peter 2.24, he personally carried our sins in his body on the cross so that we can be dead to sin and live for what is right. By his wounds, you are healed. And look how this version puts it. His wounds became your healing. Let's pray. Father, we thank you that we can declare, bless the Lord, O my soul, who forgives all of our sins and who heals all of our brokenness. God, we look to you today to be the Lord, our forgiver. And we look to you today to be the Lord, our healer. May we, like the woman who touch the hem of Jesus' garment with faith. May we reach out in faith today in a whole new way and trust you for health and wholeness in our life. And Lord, even more than that, may we become agents of healing in, in our world. In Jesus' name, amen.